Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I'm very excited uh, to be here with you today. Uh, my name is Andrew Shreve, and this uh, video is called uh, Receive Spiritual Power. So you can read along with the notes on this video if you go to my website, andrewshreve.org. That's spelled S-H-R-E-V-E. And I go to the June uh, 2012 partner letter. Go to partner letters, June 2012. And there, there you'll see the teaching on Receive Spiritual Power. Hallelujah. I'm excited about this video because uh, I really, I've really sensed the anointing of the Holy Spirit in the preparing of this teaching. And so let us just pray and, and uh, I want to welcome God into this video. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for the Word of God and we thank you for the leadership of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, I pray that this, in this session, Lord, uh, I can bring out the, the revelation of your Word. And I pray for each listener, Lord that you'd open the ears of their understanding. Lord, open the eyes of their heart so they can receive this word and so they can uh, be transformed by your word and to receive that shalom blessing of the Lord, that anointing of God, that power that is available so they can lead a uh, blessed life in all the glory as the sons, the sons of God. So we thank you for it, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, uh, in John 6, 63, Jesus said, It is the Spirit that quickeneth or makes alive. It's the Spirit. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are Spirit and they are life. So, he's comparing here the Spirit to the flesh. And he's calling the Spirit his word. He says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. So the words of Jesus, who is God, or the words of God, and you could say that means every word in the Bible, because these are the words of God, and Jesus is God. So the words that I speak unto you, the words of God, they are spirit. And they, obviously, in this context, they quicken, or they make alive. So it's the Word of God that makes us alive, that gives us life. It says, and they are life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So this tells us that the Word of God is very important for us to experience life and true life as it's, as it's meant to be in God. Hallelujah. In the above verse, Jesus says that His words are spirit. So we can say that the Word of God is spirit. This is a very important concept to accept. As many people read the Bible merely as if it were a book that contained information. You know, like they just read it from a historical point of view and they get you to, to name all the books. And I mean, that, that's not, nothing wrong with that, but the Word of God is more than just information. It is spirit and it quickens, it makes alive. Others read the Bible and try and understand it with a human intellect as if it were a scientific textbook and be, can be properly understood by human logic. Principally, the Word of God is not a book to be understood with human logic. It is a spiritual book which contains spiritual seed which will cut our heart and bring us revelation understanding of spiritual things. It's not something, the flesh profit of nothing. It's not something you can work out in your own flesh. So both these approaches, that's, that's the, uh, as an information approach and an intellectual approach, will not fully reveal the truth of God's revelation to humanity, nor bring the power of God's deliverance from the destructive forces on the earth. God wants His power to deliver you from the destructive forces on the earth. Poverty, sickness, fear, devils, all these evil things, danger, all these evil things on the earth. God wants His power to deliver you. Well, that approach to the Word of God will not bring the power. To properly receive the revelation and the power in God's Word, we need to receive God's Word as living spirit. You get that? Living spirit. That's how we need to approach the Word of God. When we read the Bible, when we meditate the Word of God, we need to have the revelation that we are receiving living spirit into our heart. Hallelujah. Into our body, into our being. In fact, God's words are living spirit spiritual seeds okay they're living spiritual 
seeds. And we can see those references there. You can look as you're reading along, but I'll read them. Mark 4 and verse 14. Mark 4.14 says, The sower soweth the word. So there we see that the word of God is called seed. Okay? The sower soweth the word. Well, you sow seed, right? So the word of God is seed. So say that with me. Say, the word of God is seed. Okay, another reference that supports that is 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23. The scripture says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So here he's calling the word of God incorruptible seed. Incorruptible seed. Hallelujah. Seed that cannot become corrupted. Seed that lives and abides forever. Living seed. Eternal seed. That's what the word of God is. It is spiritual living seed. And then in Hebrews chapter 4, he also refers to the Word of God in this way. Hebrews 4 verse 12. For the Word of God is quick and powerful. There we go. Quick, living and powerful. The Word of God is living and powerful. So the Word of God is living seed, powerful seed, spiritual seed. Hallelujah. That's what is in this Bible. Living, powerful seeds. And so we need to find those seeds and plant them into our being, plant them into our heart through meditation. And then we shall receive the, the glory and the power of the Word of God. Hallelujah. So truth or revelation and power comes when the seed word, the seed word, is sown in the human heart and given water and time to produce the fruit. In Mark 4.20 Jesus taught this truth, Mark 4.20, and he talks in this parable about fruitfulness. And he talks about seed. And he says this, verse 20, And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, some a hundred. So we can see that fruit is connected to receiving of the seed. The heart that can receive the seed will produce the fruit. What fruit? The fruit of God's kingdom. The fruit of His word. The fruit of His promises. Hallelujah. So meditation is the method of sowing and watering the word. And I preach a lot about meditation. Go to my videos. Go to my website. Go to my partner letters and you can get more information about meditation. The fruit of the seed of God's word is revelation or correct understanding. That's the first part. So the way to get correct understanding or revelation of God's word is not intellectual. It is a receiving of seed. It is a meditation of his word and that seed will produce the fruit and the fruit will be revelation, will be under correct understanding. Plus it will be the manifested power of the particular word that is grown in the human heart. So the word itself is living and will produce fruit. So if you're meditating or planting and growing seed that promises healing, the fruit of that seed will be the manifestation of healing in your life. If you are meditating seed or the word of God which promises financial provision, the fruit of that seed will be the power of God to bring about the fulfillment of His Word, which in that case will be, will be financial provision. Hallelujah. Now, only the Holy Spirit can reveal the truth of God's Word to the person whose heart is good ground to receive it. Let's look at scriptures here. This is why I'm saying that you cannot understand the Word of God by reading it as if it's information or reading it from an intellectual perspective, you need the Holy Spirit to reveal the truth of the Word of God. It is the Holy Spirit. We, can, we, are, not, we are dependent upon God to reveal to us the truth of His Word. In John 16 and verse 13, we see Jesus said these words, Howbeit when He... The spirit of truth is come. 
that's the Holy Spirit. He will guide you into all truth. And elsewhere in the Bible it says the word is truth. He will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into truth. He will guide you into understanding the word of God. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. So Jesus is the word of God. He shall receive of mine, the word of God, and he shall show it unto you. He shall show the word of God unto you. He shall reveal the word of God unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore I said that he will take of mine and shall show it unto you. Hallelujah. Then in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14, we read this. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. So the Spirit of God is in the business of revealing the Word. The natural man does not receive. That's why sometimes you can preach the Word of God to somebody and they look at you like they don't understand you because they haven't learned to listen from their spirit. They're listening from their mind. And the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. That's why some people think, oh, I'm a fool sometimes. They, when I preach the Word of God, or in, in personal conversation, and the things of, the, of God and His kingdom, they look at me like I'm a fool. But it's because they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. The things of God are spiritually discerned. It is the Holy Spirit who takes God's Word and reveals it unto us. Without the planting and watering of the Word of God in the human heart and without the revealing of the Word by the Holy Spirit to our understanding, we cannot correctly understand God's words. The lack of understanding of these truths is the reason for so many errors and doctrinal divisions within the body of Christ. If every teacher and preacher, including myself, of the Word of God, would, would spend the time to, 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 to meditate the Word, listen to the Holy Spirit, be reliant upon the Holy Spirit, you would find there would be a much, there would be unity within the doctrinal understanding of the body of Christ. The reason for doctrinal differences is not because we cannot know the truth. It is because we haven't spent the time to spend time with the Holy Spirit and to rely upon the Holy Spirit for the revealing of the Word of God. Hallelujah. So in my personal experience, I have also found this to be true. I worked and studied for two years with an international Christian youth mission. So I did two years missionary work as a, as a young man, age 21, 22, 23. And there we had training and Bible teaching and scripture memory and all sorts of things. I then studied for two years at a faith Pentecostal Bible school where, where I was in the Word of God for a long time every day. I then spent three years at university to complete a Bachelor of Arts degree with a major in theology. Even with years of study, because my approach to the Word of God was primarily academic, in other words, I didn't understand these spiritual concepts I'm talking to you now about, I was not as spiritually aware as I should have been. And I often felt like I was hitting the wall when it came to receiving God's power into my life. It was only when I changed my approach to the Word of God and began to receive specific seeds of God's Word into my heart, as directed by the Holy Spirit, that true understanding and power began to increasingly flow into my life. In other words... It was only when I began to trust in the Holy Spirit, rely on the Holy Spirit, ask Him what He wanted me to read in the Bible, ask Him what Scripture He wanted me to meditate. Then, that's when, as I walked with Him, the Holy Spirit, that's when I, He showed me a seed. He said, meditate that seed. And I received it. And then, over time, the power of God began to flow into my life. And things became a lot easier. But when I was just following the, the, my own understanding and my own academic pursuit, and my own study of this book and reading of that book, then I was getting little power in my life. After I hit the wall, I knew I needed to change my strategy. The Lord graciously helped me. The Lord taught me to temporarily put aside my knowledge from years of study. 
The study had some benefit, yet I needed to adjust my approach to God's word before I could correctly benefit from the knowledge. The Lord taught me to take one seed, example, the Lord is my shepherd, and to accept that seed in my heart through daily, continual meditation. In other words, I would just accept the Lord as my shepherd. Forget about all the other doctrines. Just receive the Lord as my shepherd. Then he'd take me to another scripture and I lay different foundations in my life by the Holy Spirit. God revealed to me through this method of of receiving seeds, meditating seeds, being led by the Spirit. He revealed to me his great love, his mercy, his righteousness, his healing, his prosperity, his forgiveness, etc., Many, many things he revealed. It became a wonderful journey of ongoing revelation as I walked with the Lord. I no longer struggled to try and understand God's word. I simply fellowship with the Holy Spirit and planted and watered the seeds that he showed me. As I was faithful to plant and water the spiritual seeds, over time, revelation of those seeds was forthcoming. When revelation came, so did faith and understanding. With faith came authority and with authority came power you can read that you can see that principle in matthew 16 and verses 13 to 19 actually i will we'll look at that verse because it's a very powerful one matthew 16 13 to 19 jesus said he said whom do men say that i the son of man am they said some say you are john the baptist some elias And others, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say you that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So Jesus is saying to Simon that God in heaven, the Holy Spirit of God revealed to him this revelation of the word of God. Revealed to him that Jesus Christ was, that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. This is revelation from the Spirit of God. And he says that Peter is blessed because he has this revelation. And I sound you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church. Now, Peter means in the Greek a small piece of rock. Then he says, upon this rock, that's a larger piece, a large rock. So he said, you are a small rock, and upon this large rock I'll build my church. What's the large rock? The large rock is the revelation of who Jesus Christ is. It's the revelation of the word of God. That's the large rock. I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell cannot prevail against the revelation of the word of God. Hallelujah. And I will give unto you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. That key is authority. See, with revelation comes authority. And whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. There's power. With revelation from God, of the word of God, comes, comes authority. And with authority comes power. The Lord taught me how to experience the power of his kingdom through his word and spirit. When we experience his power, Through his spiritual word, we come into a greater freedom of life. John, and we'll close with this uh, this scripture. John chapter 8, verse 31 says, John chapter 8 and verse 31 says, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. See, continue in the word, continue in meditation. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. The Word of God shall make you free. Continue in the Word, and you shall walk into greater freedom. We're going to have to continue this as a part two, uh, this teaching. So I'll you look for part two video. Let me just pray for you. Father, we thank you for the Word of God. We thank you for this teaching this day, this revelation of your seed and of your Word and of your power. Lord, let it penetrate the hearts of your people. Let them come into revelation knowledge of your Word, Lord, and how to receive your Word and your power into their life. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Bless you. I love you. And see you again soon.